Hey, Darla, what's up? Hey, John, how's it going? Thank you so much for having me on the show. Of course. Thanks for calling. What's going on? Well, my husband and I have been married coming on to nine years here in October, and um, it's been a great marriage. But um, in about the last year or so, he had a traumatic event happen in his in his life. His dad passed in a, in a horrific way, and he had some trouble handling it. So he um, uh, he started smoking weed. And, um, and I'm like, you know, this is a difficult time for him. He's an adult man. He can make this decision and I'll support him and I'll, I'll be there for him. Cause it, it was like absolutely a, a horrible time. What happened? And, um, his dad had a heart attack, um, had triple bypass surgery, fell into ICU psychosis and started like begging for him to take his life. He was like, please take my life. Like I, that was the last com- conversation that he had with his dad. So it was left on these, you know, these bad memories of, of the last days. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it was, it, and it was a really difficult time and he started taking up smoking and it did seem to really reduce his anxiety and really help him get through this time. And then, um, you know, a few months pass, we have an international move and he starts taking up, taking up more smoking. And over the course of a few weeks, I see it change his behavior a little bit. You know, it, it starts going from um, anxiety reducing to this is starting to like cause him to be paranoid and more angry than normal and not act like himself. So I ask him, hey, you know, um, I'm also worried about your lungs. You know, do you think that maybe you could take a break for just a week? And he stops for a week. And, um, and I was so grateful for that. And, and he's like, Hey, you know, you were really right. It was affecting my behavior, my mood. And, um, it almost felt like I was slipping in psychosis. He told me, and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I don't want you to ever have to slip into psychosis. I'm so glad that, you know, that you're enjoying this break. And then, you know, the week passes and I was sort of hoping that, you know, he would consider quitting considering that it was, um, from from his uh, uh, feedback, a positive change to stop, but he continued and he continued smoking a lot more. So we're talking, you know, it was like one joint a day to like three or four every day. And this is when like fights start coming up and then we start having the same fight where, oh man, it's just these little things like, well, we were trying to find this house and we looked at it and um, we loved it. It was a cool house. And, you know, as we're driving to go get lunch, I kind of make this comment. and like, you know, I love the house, but I don't know what you think about that exterior color. I didn't really love that. You know, I'm <laughs> just like talking about an exterior color of a house. It's like, you know, um, and he gets super mad. He's like, you're so negative. Why are you pointing out this exterior color of a house? And um, is that a change from how he normally would have been? Not really. Normally, he's he's not really like on edge. He's he's willing to have conversations. No, that's what started, that's what I mean. Like a, a couple of years ago, if you had made that same joke, would he have just laughed it off or knew that you're just playing? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, like, it, we had that connection where you can just kind of, you know, it's like your best friend. You sure. can just talk about anything. So, where where are y'all you know, now? What, what's what's the situation now? How can I help? Well, currently we're separated. Um, oh wow! Okay, did he move out on you? Or did you kick him out? It was a little bit of both. I started getting really frustrated with these recurring fights and walking on eggshells. Mm-hmm. And um, at the time, we had recently relocated, and we were kind of displaced and living in our camper van. So the plan was we're going to live in our camper van and find a place to live. Um, and then we had this house sitting gig, and I was like, you know, he um, we kept having this fight. So he grabbed his stuff. He was going to go live in his van, but then not. Half an hour later, after this big fight, he moves in with his friend. He's also using drugs and is also going through a divorce. And that worries me because it's not a great influence. And then he kind of just abandoned me. He took the car. He left me at this house sitting gig. And I was left to, like, find the car by myself and just uh, get an apartment. He didn't really check in with me, which was also unlike him. And I just moved into my new apartment. But, um, yeah, he just hasn't been a friend, you know, like even if we're divorcing, like after we've been together for that long, you kind of hope that it can be 
amicable if it really just doesn't work and, you know, he may, he's made the decision to just not want to change his habit or something. And, you know, uh, um, yeah, so I, I'm just kind of... So are y'all, are, y'all, are y'all divorcing? Or what's, what's the plan? Yeah. Or I guess there's not really a plan, huh? Well, he was apathetic for a while. He was like, you know, he was just not wanting to talk to me. I would reach out to him and he would just not text back. And then I became kind of apathetic because I was like, well, if you're not talking to me, I'm not talking. And then just a few days ago, I, I said, hey, I need some clarity. What is going on? And he just goes on this whole thing of like, we're definitely divorcing. Um, if I want to like ruin my life and make that decision, um, then I'll make that decision. He was like saying stuff that wasn't, it didn't make sense to me. And he would say like, you're my best friend and soulmate. And if it doesn't work with you, it'll never work with anyone else. And I'll never get remarried. And he was going into this like almost self-destruct mode. And I like, I, absolutely. I want to respect the decision. If he's like, I don't want to try anymore. Cause I've given my, you know, I've, I've sent him a message and I said, Hey, I want to try. Let's get better at communication. Let's, let's work on this. And, um, and that wasn't received well or at, at all. He would, he just ignored the message. So here's the deal, Darla. He's not on the phone right now. So the only person I can talk to is you. Okay. Yeah. And this has to just be heartbreaking. You lost your father-in-law and then you just watched your husband just kind of disappear on you, huh? Yeah, exactly. It was, it, it was really sad because it's not like him. And well, Hold know, on, hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on, hang on. It is like him because you're watching it happen. And the more you keep repeating, it's not like him, it's not like him, you separate what's actually happening in real time from this fantasy you have about him. Yeah. And you have to live in reality. Has he struggled with mental health challenges before? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that hit me really hard. You're right. <laughs> well, yeah, well has, um, and you know, you know, excessive um, and heavy marijuana use can can exacerbate psychosis. I mean, there's all kinds of studies out there. We we know that. But here's the hard part: you can't make him stop. Yeah. And he can choose to burn everything to the ground, and I'm sorry that he's choosing that. Yeah. Even my friends are like... Hold on. I don't care what your friends say. I want you just to sit with me for a second. Okay? (laughs) Sorry. You're you're using a lot of talking and circling and texting to to try to wallpaper over how much this hurts. I want you just to sit for a second. Your husband just left. (sighs) Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you in an apartment right now? Yeah, I just... I found this new apartment and... Do you um, have enough money to live in that apartment? Not really. Okay. Yeah, I'm just getting started here, but... um. Have you signed a lease? Yes. Okay. Then here's a, here's the deal. You have to make sure that you're okay. Because he has abandoned you. And I'm telling you this because I love you, not because I'm trying to be a jerk, okay? Yeah. But before the day's over, you got to go get two jobs. And they're not going to be great jobs, and they're, and they're going to be working for the man. They're not going to be this freewheeling, living in a van life that you'd imagined. But you got to get, I don't want you to get a, a, I don't want you to get kicked out of your apartment for your inability to pay. I want you to care. I don't, I don't, I don't want this thing to get any worse for you than it already is. Yeah. And your husband of a decade just bailed on you. I also don't, I, I don't want you to not be able to eat and not have a place to live. These things spin out of control really, really fast. True. Okay. Where are you working right now? Well, um, I, I need to find something like as soon as possible. I okay. mean, just this last Saturday and that was my plan. I was like, Monday, I'm just going to go apply for anything and everything I can find. Yes. And, and and listen, this isn't forever and this is not dream jobs. It's not about passion. I don't care about any of that stuff. This is about survival. Yeah. Okay. You're also living in one of the top two or three or four most expensive places in the United States. 
Yeah. And it may be that this is very, very short term because you're going to have to move to a place where you can survive because your husband is abandoning you. Yeah. And I'm saying that over and over because I want you to internalize that. I if it was like, safe you know, for my you. Brain going like, no, <laughs> it can't be true. Like my brain is just going like. I know. I know. Oh, you know. I know. <laughs> but this has been happening. This has been going on for a year, right? Yeah. Just. You know, he took it up, and and I feel like he actually fell into psychosis, and like the people that know him also are saying that, and yeah. I just, it's kind of like abandoning somebody in their darkest hour or something. Like he abandoned me because, I mean, it feels like he really is psychotic at this point, but like I feel like I'm abandoning him also because like I want to help him get out of that, you know, because I made that commitment to him, and I don't want to watch him like get into this psychosis and make these decisions that. Seem nonsensical, you know. I get, and, I, I 1000% get that, and I'm with you. I would go and he, I'd go to hell and back to get my wife. But you can't be yeah. untethered, meaning you have to be anchored into something. And right now, you don't have a place to live, you don't have a home, you don't have food, yeah. you don't have a water. Yeah. And so, the most important thing you can do is to anchor yourself into something that is sturdy so that you can go get him if that's, if that's the way that works out. Yeah. So I want you to go get two jobs. And one of those is going to be all day. One of those is going to be into the night. Throwing boxes at Walmart or Costco or Sam somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And then once you get your feet underneath you and you look at the math and you say, okay, I can afford to exist. Then he's got a place to come home to that's not a van. It's not somebody else's house that you're house sitting in. Yeah. He doesn't have that. And you're going to have to go with several other people because you've tried. You've tried to talk to him. You've tried to love him. You've tried to reason with him and none of those things are working. And it might be if he's breaking the law that calling the police saves his life. It might be that calling the local mental health services saves his life. But I want you to hear me say something really clearly, okay? He's not doing this because of something you've done wrong or something you didn't do enough of, okay? Yeah. You didn't mess up. It sounds like he loves you to death and he's hurting real bad and then he's sick on top of it. Yeah. Is that fair? It makes sense. I mean, he's even said that himself. He would have these really like adamant, you know, stances on like wanting to divorce and stuff and saying all these things. And, and then later he'll text me and say, Hey, sorry, I don't know what's going on with me anymore. And I'm not feeling well. And like, he'll kind of admit that it will be like a moment of clarity that he'll have. And then I'll try to, I, I get excited because I'm like, Oh, he's sort of realizing what's going on. And then, I'll try and text him back and try and talk to him, but then he's just not. There are a, there are shuts a, off again. There's a ton of nonprofit um, inpatient places in Los Angeles, California. Yeah. If I were you, I might research a few of those and see if they're willing to take somebody. And during one of those moments of clarity or lucidity, if you said, hey, I'm going to come pick you up, Maybe he would go with you. Yeah. Or if you and a couple of friends went to pick him up. But he's going to have to go from there to a treatment place. Yeah. Okay. But right now he's not on the phone. You are. And I want you to make sure you're anchored in somewhere, okay? Yeah. I, that, that makes total sense. I got to just get some stability and stop living in this like dream world of there you go. denying that this happened. <laughs> and let's stop texting. So much gets lost over text. And if he's not in a good place, he's going to read your text. And who knows how he's, how his body is hearing those words that you've typed to him. If he texts you, I want you to call him. Just pick up the phone and call him. Yeah. 
or send voice messages at the very least. Okay, I want him to hear your voice and I want you to say his name over and over and over again. Overly repeat his name, okay? Yeah. It will give him a little bit of rehumanizing, okay? And listen, we're thinking long-term here. Right now he's left you. He's left you. So we're going to go into survival mode. Our four walls, we're going to get a place to stay. We're going to have food. We're going to have our electric and water. And we've got to have a phone these days. And we're going to get transportation. Doesn't mean you have to have a car, but you got to be able to get to and from where you're going to go. Whether that's Uber or whatever that looks like, public transit, whatever that looks like, wherever you happen to be. We're going to anchor in a little bit and make sure we can pay our bills. And then we're going to go get him. Or we're going to make peace with Los Angeles, California may not be the place for me long term if he chooses to be gone forever. We're also going to make some phone calls and see if there's some impatient places you can play for people who don't have any money. And I know Los Angeles has a significant, um, that's where a lot of folks go who struggle with addiction, but they got a lot of resources out there too if you can get plugged in with them. Um, hopefully someone's checking the show notes. If you know of some places, people who are listening, put them in the show notes there and um, Darla can check them out. Let's put on our oxygen mask first right now. Let's live in reality. Let's make sure we're anchored in. And then we can decide what we're going to do next. I'm so sorry this has happened, sister. I'm so sorry. 